Hello there, and welcome to another aesthetic imaging video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be going over this disappearing marker effect. And as usual, the project files will be available to download. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can follow along. It's actually pretty simple and doesn't take a lot of effort to do, but it looks pretty neat. Now, if you're one of those people, uh, I guess we can also show you how to make it make the marker text up here. You know, if you want to be a contrarian. That's fine. In fact, it's so simple. This is pretty much the setup that we have for it. We got our marker text, pretty simple, a transition mat, and an adjustment layer. And of course, in our main comp here, we have some effects added on top to kind of give that uh, bleeding marker ink look and some spots where maybe the, the marker was dried up a little bit. So let's get started. All right, to get this thing started, let's create a new composition. We can either do that by clicking on this icon over here or we can go up to Composition, a New Composition, or also we can do Command N. All right, so we're gonna call this Main Comp, and we're gonna do 1920 by 1080, 23.976 for the frame rate, that's not important at all. And we'll do a duration of eight seconds. All right, so let's hit OK. Let's create a new text layer by right-clicking down here, going to New, Text. And we'll type in marker ink. For this example, we're gonna be using Providence Sans Pro Bold. This is kind of like a, a, a handwritten looking text to begin with. Uh, you can actually find it on the Adobe Fonts page. And font size, we're gonna be doing 239, zero for the tracking, and 135 in the height with 100% on the width. All right, so let's go up to the align panel here and let's just align this to the center. And what I want to do is take this text layer and put it into its own little composition. So we're going to hit Shift, Command C, and we'll call this Text Holder, PC. All right, so we can just hit OK. Now we have the, all this blank space all around our text, and we can just go ahead and get rid of that so After Effects doesn't have to use its brain power to figure out what's happening in these empty pixels, which is nothing. So we're just going to say, hey, don't worry about it. So we're going to go into our Text Holder, PC, and we're gonna click on this little icon right here, region of interest, and we're just gonna draw a box around our text. Now you can make it really close if you want. I'm gonna leave some padding around there. All right, so once you get it to the size that you want, you can go up to composition, crop comp to region of interest. And to make sure our text is center, we can just go ahead and align it again. So now in our main comp, you can see that this text holder PC is only taking up around here. All right, so our first step in creating the disappearing ink is to make our text disappear. So let's go to effects and presets and we're gonna add a linear wipe and that's gonna be under transition linear wipe. And we're just gonna add that onto our text holder. Now, if we take this transition completion, you can see that we're, we're causing our text to disappear. So we'll leave this at about 50% here. We'll go to feather and we'll feather this out quite a bit. Uh, we'll do like 500-ish. Now there's more of a fade before it disappears. All right, so let's go to the first frame here and set our transition completion to zero. Click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Now if we hit U, we can actually see our keyframe. There he is right there. All right, so let's go to seven seconds in and let's set our transition completion to 100. And now this is animated for us. Bye bye marker ink text. All right, now it's time to start getting into the real magic of this effect. So what we're gonna do is right click down in here, go to new adjustment layer. And real quickly, let's just call this ink effects. All right, so the first effect we're gonna add is a fast box blur, and that is under blur and sharpen, fast box blur. Let's add that on top of our ink effects. And let's set the blur radius here to be six. All right, so our next step is to squish that alpha back into being um, a hard edge. So with that, we're gonna add a CC threshold, and we're gonna add that on top of our ink effects. Now where it says channel, we're gonna switch this from luminance to alpha. Now, as you can see, it has squished that alpha transition 
but because of the blur, it kind of creates a more blobby look. And this way, when we play it back, it looks more fluid in the animation rather than just fading away, right? That's pretty cool. Now, of course, we can get the same effect um, without using CC Threshold. We can also use uh, levels, which I have actually done this in the past in other tutorials. But, you know, we can do uh, levels. will do the same thing. If you go to the channel, go to alpha. You can squish in these little triangles here. Squish them in. And that's basically what the CC Threshold is doing. It's squishing the alpha channel. All right, so let's get rid of our levels because we already have that CC threshold. And you might have noticed with both of the effects that if we zoom in here, this looks awful, right? So what we have here is our edges seem to be a little rough. And there's one effect that we can use to fix that. So in order to fix how rough the edges are, we have to add a rough in the edges, right? I know. So the only thing we're going to change in this is the fractal influence. We're going to set that to zero. Yeah, I know. Pretty uh, counterintuitive, right? To fix our rough edges, we need to add a rough and edges. All right. So if we play this back, we can see that we have a nice liquid transition happening. Now, to me, this is a little too linear. It's basically just going from left to right which in itself doesn't look horrible, but I want it to be more randomized. And now we can do this by clicking on our text holder PC and I'm going to new, solid, and we'll call this fractal. And hit okay. And on top of our fractal solid, we're gonna add a fractal noise. All right, so we're just gonna add our fractal noise on top of our layer. And fractal type, we're gonna leave at basic. Contrast, we're gonna turn that up way big, like around 500, how about that? And our brightness, we'll, we'll just turn that down just a little bit. And where it says overflow, we're gonna change this from HDR results to clip. Now, if we flip open transform, we can see our scale, and we're just gonna scale that up a little bit. Something about maybe 160 ish. So on top of our fractal layer, we're going to add another new solid. And this one's going to be called transition. I'm going to hit OK. And we're actually going to take our linear wipe. We're going to copy that. And we're going to paste that on top of our transition mat. And actually on our text holder on the, the linear wipe for our text holder, we're just going to get rid of it. Bye bye. So now we have the linear wipe revealing our fractal noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a colorama and that's under color correction colorama. And we're going to add that on top of our linear wipe. Now our solid will turn red. So we're going to flip down to input phase and we're going to go get phase from alpha. Now we have a rainbow. All right. So our second step is to open up the output cycle and where it says use preset palette. Let's set that to ramp gray. And the last step is to go down to modify, open that up and check on change empty pixels. So now we have this black and white map, but we want some of our fractal to be showing up. So what we can do is set this transition layer to linear light. So this way our black and white map will also be using our fractal noise. So let's take both of these layers, the transition and the fractal, and let's pre-compose them. Shift Command C and we'll call this Transition Matte. Now what we can do is take our text holder PC and let's set this to Luma Matte Transition Matte. All right, so let's play this back, see what's going on. All right, so I'm noticing a little problem here. It doesn't go all the way to the end. Uh. All right, so let's figure out what's going on here. So let's open up our transition mat. Now our keyframe starts here and it should be over here. And the end keyframe is outside of our composition. Let's select both of these and just move them over to where they're supposed to be. There we go. So now we go from zero to 100. All right, so now 
that we have that completed, if we turn on our ink effects again, rather than this text fading off in a completely left to right manner, you know, it starts fading. And then the A is starting to fade before the M is completely gone. And as you can see, this just gives it a more organic look. All right, so let's take all of our layers, select them all, and let's pre-compose them. Shift, Command, C, and we'll just call this Text Comp. Now, if we go into our Project window and we go into our Assets folder, you'll find that there's a Paper Texture. Now, let's just bring that down into our Comp below our Text. So our Text Comp, let's make this red. So we're going to add a Fill. That's under Generate Fill and make it red. And we're gonna make it a little bit darker. Probably about 70%. So what we're gonna do from here is change our blending mode from normal to multiply. And we can adjust the brightness and all that as we see fit. Maybe make it a little brighter, 80, 85%, 86% is fine. All right, so let's make this look like it's interacting with the paper a little bit more by adding another rough and edges. All right, so let's add our rough and edges to our text comp. And first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna turn down the scale just a little bit to maybe like 35, 36. We can turn up our border. This affects how much of it is being roughened. Uh, we'll go with about maybe 11. That sounds good. Complexity, let's turn that up to three. Now edge sharpness, let's bring this down to about maybe 48. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to look like it's kind of interacting with the fibers of the paper. You know, you can make that a little more obvious, a little less obvious. We'll go with something like that. So what this is kind of adding to it, besides making it look more like actual marker instead of a text layer on top of a piece of paper, if we turn this on, you see as it fades out, it gets this kind of like dried up look. Like, almost like the ink is actually disappearing into the paper. All right, so to finish up this effect, let's show you how to create these kind of like dry spots. Let's go into our main comp. Let's create a new solid. And we'll call this dry spots. There we go. And we're gonna add a fractal noise on top of that. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna turn the contrast up a bunch and turn up the brightness. So that we have these kind of patches of darker spots. Like what we did with the first fractal noise, let's turn the overflow to clip. All right, so let's open up transform and let's bring down the scale a whole bunch. Something about 32 would do. So let's take our text comp and under the track mat, let's set this to luma mat. And of course we can go into our uh, dry spots and adjust this. Obviously the darker you make it, the more dry the marker is going to be. You can see what some uh, changing some of these settings might do. All right, let's turn this up a little bit to maybe about 60. No. Yeah, that that's fine. All right, so let's play this thing back and see what we're left with. But wait, I promised to show you how, how to make the, the, the text appear out of nowhere rather than disappear. How do we do that? Let's go in our text comp and where it says Luma Matte, let's just change this to Luma Inverted. Now the text appears. Cool. Yeah. So that's all you have to do for that one. Uh, we have reached the end of the tutorial. So if you find that helpful, don't forget to hit like, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the, the bell notification thing, you know, do all the things, leave a comment, you know, even if it just says for the algorithm, because it does, it helps out the channel. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.